This is a brief introduction to the modal relations ontology, which is part of the common core ontologies developed by Rod Rudnicki and his team in Buffalo. And um, I'm summarizing now ideas developed by the team for describing entities such as planned or designed entities, which on a realist perspective uh, don't exist. You'll see that we have BFO at the top and then we have a relation ontology, which is imported from the very large collection of relations in the relation ontology, which was created by the Obo Foundry. You will also see in the top right hand corner something called the modal relation ontology, which I'm uh, I'm very interested in uh, showing to you because I think this is also an original and unique contribution. And um, so the, you can see how they're divided, time and place, attributes, physical objects, processes. And there are um, many, many different users of the Common Core ontologies um, at many different uses of the Common Core ontology. So the cyber and sensor domains, the space mission domains. So you'll see that there is a, a, a sort of tilt in the direction of what might be interesting from the point of view of the military. Uh, but the Common Core ontologies themselves are all free and open source. Um, what happens is that we have domain ontologies for things like um, uh, military planning, which are uh, not quite so freely available as the Common Core ontologies themselves at the top here. Um, and now the way the Common Core ontologies are used is one way is by taking large databases. So yesterday I talked a little bit about the, the large number of government um, repositories with catalogs and taxonomies attached to them. So we take data of that sort and then we use the Common Core ontologies in order to tag the column headers in such data tables. And this turns out to be a very efficient way of acquiring semantically enhanced data for various purposes. And so in principle, we can do this to create ontologies of the data that we have at very high levels using a, a tool called OSCAR, which creates ont ontology chains semi-automatically from raw data. And um, uh, now there are various problems um, which arise as soon as you start using a highly general mid-level ontology in this way. So attributes change over time. How do you deal with things like ages? People get older. And so uh, how do you deal with that in such a way that you, you always have uh, data which is up to date uh, and correct? And then there is a problem of keeping track of provenance. How do you know where specific kinds of data come from? And you also have a, a big problem, which is what I want to deal with in the final couple of minutes. Um, so BFO is a realist ontology as contrasted with the famous Dolce, which everyone knows about, which is a, a, an ontology which deals also with non-existent entities such as Nicola Guarino's 14th daughter. And BFO does not, want to deal with non-existent entities because it wants to be a realist ontology. But there are entities in the world which are very important to BFO, which deal with non-existent entities. And they are, for instance, plans and designs. And BFO does not want to be in a position where its ontology cannot deal with plans and designs. And so, um, we're going to see how BFO can deal with plans and designs by looking at the modal relation ontology. So um, we, we talked a little bit about the problems which arise when entities are dealt with over time, for instance, when they age. And I'm not going to deal with this because it will, uh, it will distract us from what I really want to deal with. But let me just mention the, the idea of stasis so when Abraham Lincoln is president, then he has a president's role. And this president role occupies a certain temporal interval. And so we 
reify the president role in order to be able to assert that Abraham Lincoln was president at a certain time. And uh, this turns out to be a very uh, valuable way of dealing with the problems which arise as a result of the fact that people can change. And this idea of a stasis, a stasis is a very boring process. It's a process which does not involve any change. And we, other people use the word state, uh, but the word state means so many different things to different people that we, we found that using an odd word stasis and defining it very carefully as a process, a kind of process, just a flat process, if you like, is more useful. And uh, we won't talk about literals. Um, we won't talk about the way CCO deals with provenance. Um, we won't talk about uh, the ways provenance are recorded because we want to talk about non-existent entities. Or rather, we want to see how we can deal with what people think they are doing when they think they are talking about non-existent entities within a BFO CCO framework. And so we're going to look very quickly at designed artifacts, predicted outcomes, and reference of false statements. And um, what, what we want to, to do, we want to uh, stick with realism. So we shouldn't be able to infer from anything that we say, anything that is false. And we don't want to be able to infer from anything that we say that some non-existing entity exists. But we do want to make it possible to compare actual entities with what look like non-existent entities. And a, a, an example would be we have an airplane which was built to a certain specification. And the airplane is delivered and it flies. But when they fly it, it, it proves not quite to satisfy the specification. It's heavier or slower or... Um, there is some difference. And so the airplane as specified in the requirement specification on the box is not exactly the aircraft that is actually on the field about to take off. And so this distinction between the desired specifications and the actual specifications is very important in manufacturing. So how do we allow comparisons between actual entities and putative non-existent entities? So that, that problem is solved by the modal relation ontology. And what the modal relation ontology does is the following. We create a copy of all the relations in BFO and CCO, but we, it's, a, it's a different relation with a different namespace. And when we use relational expressions from the modal relation ontology, then the ontological commitment to the existence of the reference of the corresponding statements goes away. So we can make all the comparisons that we want and we, we, we create sentences which look very much like sentences about real objects. But because we're using the modal relation ontology, we cannot infer that those real objects exist in the way that we can always infer that they exist when we use the plain vanilla relation ontology of which the modal relations ontology is a copy. Now, this is a very simple idea. It allows you to understand what's going on in designs. The relationship between a design and the designed object is very similar whether or not the designed object ever gets built. So in other words, when we're talking about the relationship between the design and the designed object in the case where a design is never ever realized, which is in most cases, and the way we talk about that relationship when, when the designed object really does get built, which is when you're really successful, they are similar kinds of talk, but there's a big difference. We can't infer the existence of the designed object, the product in the first case, and we can in the second case. All right, and so this is how we represent plans using the modal relation ontology. And you can just see MRO everywhere. 
And we can talk about testing of the artifact, which is the result of uh, the plan, even if it never, even if the testing never occurs. And this is the way we deal with the difference between actual events and planned events, which is also a comparison of the sort which, for instance, military organizations are making all the time because they want to plan in such a way that they follow the track which led to success rather than the track which led to failure. These are some of the people who are either using uh, the Common Core ontologies or reviewing it for purposes of use. So the Industrial Ontologies Foundry, which I talked about, they are using it in a big way. And some of the other manufacturing organizations mentioned here are uh, supporting the Industrial Ontologies Foundry, and so they are using it also. And with that, I will stop.